Tano for Digamon. Otano for Digamon. Otano for Digamon.
fate is yours. But time is short and Morag stirs. The city you call Neverwinter is under siege. Morag was the queen of my people. The old ones, the creator race. Morag used the words to put her people into a deep hibernation when the cold winter came. The old ones could not survive the coming of the winter storm. Within the saw storm, Morag would gather her strength year after year, century after... You do not comprehend the magic that once bound the word slaves to the words, abandoned in the frozen waste. The saw storm is buried beneath the streets of Neverwinter. Imagine what will happen when the power is awakened fully and released. Something has awakened Morag's spirit. Morgrim serves her. A pawn, blinded by her promises. Now, Morgrim seeks to claim the words of power that... <laughs> I have just received the latest reports from the battlefield, and things are grim. Erebeth with her. Finally, some good news. And not a moment too soon. Even now, I am preparing to leave for Castle Neverwinter. I might as well open my coffers to you before we go. Whatever awaits us, I just want to tell you that I have been proud to serve at your side. And there is more where that came from. All our weapons and... I was going to give them to my most trusted operatives to... Time grows short. We will leave... I own... The words of power. The tools of a creator race. Hadrilene spoke of them as though they could shape worlds. And perhaps they had. With these in hand, victory would not be far behind. Or so it was thought. While Erengand searched for the ancient relics, Morgrim's army pressed their attacks against Neverwinter. Their dark magics and sheer numbers soon overwhelmed the defenders. The betrayer, Erebeth, was at the forefront when the walls were breached. The words of power once thought safe within Castle Never, were in danger of falling to the enemy. And behind the invasion, an even greater evil, Morag, Queen of the Old Ones, had awoken. You must speak with Lord Nasher first. Once you have... We meet again. As you know, I am Nasha Alagonda. Erin Ged tells me you have done much in the defense of our city. Erebeth knows our defenses too well. Do not give up hope, my lord. And what good has that done? Perhaps Hadrilene will reveal their secret to us. I don't trust that creature, Erin, and neither should you. Hadrilene told us about the secret door beneath Castle Never. And what good has that done, Erin? Perhaps Hadrilene will speak to our champion. Enough, Erin. Now, if you want to speak to Hadrilene, you are free to do so. Personally, I think this is all a waste of time. Of course, of course. But before you go, maybe Gend is right. I doubt it will do much good, but any important information you come across should be reported directly to Erin Gen. These are indeed dark times. But if Neverwinter is to survive, we must all play our part. And your own part is one you know. You should speak to Hadrilene before you leave. My instincts tell me that she is the key.
I have been waiting for you. They are weak. Like the ones you call Arabeth and Mogrim. Mogrim has unlocked the magic of the words of power. Three of the words are here in this castle. I came here to warn your people against Morag's return. Do not waste time trying to free me from this prison. The fourth word is close. Bring the word to me. You must hurry. Hello.
Mortano for Digyama. Only one way out for you! Mortano for Digyama. Mortano for Digyama. surprised to see you here. You have become quite the thorn in Margram's side. I, however, am not too proud to admit my respect for you. You have thwarted us at almost every turn. I was about to make you the same offer. Though I suspect Margram would rather sacrifice you. Morag is a voracious mistress. It seems there are never enough dead to satisfy her hunger. You dare call these people innocent? His blood is on their hands! We are all guilty here, and we are all deserving of death! Justice? There is no such thing. I came here for vengeance. My position at the head of the armies only hastened the inevitable end. Can you not feel it in the air? An evil cloud covers the city, the shadow of Morag. I am no blind fool like Morgrim. I know Morag will betray me. In fact, I'm counting on it. I deserve death for what I have done. But when I die, I will have the satisfaction of knowing Neverwinter was made to pay for what happened to Fenthic. There is nothing more to say. Chosen you to be her champion. I suppose that is true. You have the strength of your convictions. Tell me, how can you go on, knowing you fight for a city that is doomed to fall? I have seen the future in my dreams. Neverwinter will vanish in a blaze of flame when hope, <laughs> all hope within my heart, perished with Fenthic. Is the execution of my lover not justification enough for what I have become? With Benthic's death, I lost more than a lover. How could I believe in a god who allowed such an atrocity? How could I serve a city so mercilessly cruel? Perhaps... Perhaps you were right. Perhaps, had I acted differently... Look around you! Look at the death and destruction I have brought to Neverwinter. And I have been too long under Morag's power. The Queen has a... a hold on me. I could not stand with you against her, even if... even if I wanted to. I could bring my information to Lord Nasha and Erin Gend, true. But it would not be enough to turn the tide of the battle. Perhaps a few hundred lives could be saved, though the city would still fall. But what will that avail me? Lord Nasher would still have me executed, but I should sacrifice myself for the sake of the people who demanded Fenthic's blood? 
Do you really believe me capable of so selfless an act? Once I would have gladly sacrificed myself for this city. But I have changed. You are wasting your time. I have chosen a path of hatred and bloody vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what up? Says, smile.